Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another Shamshir Sound video. Today we're going to be looking at Z Game Editor. I want to show you guys like a revealed, inspired type of peak effect. So peak effects are those visualizations that go in tandem with the audio bouncing, waves, things like that. So um, I discovered this a while back. I was just experimenting. I love experimenting with this plugin. And I'm on FL Studio 20.6, so I'm really excited for... Uh, 20.7 because uh, that it's already out and it has like new visuals and whatnot so gonna be excited to take a look at that without further ado let's just jump right into it uh, I've went ahead and added an image in my content so I went ahead and added an image already so I've added that here from the drop down menu um, the idea here is that I have 1920 by 1080 uh, so the preview and the intended video that I rendered is 16 by 9. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and add a peak effect. So let's see if I can remember which one it is. And the cool thing about this and the reason why I say it's like Revealed inspired is that Revealed does some pretty sick, uh, whoever does their visuals, they do some pretty sick stuff. Really, really dope. Um, let's go ahead and just mute this, play it back so we can see. So the idea here is we're going to take this, the Stripe Peaks. And the Stripe Peaks, you know, sometimes you look at an effect and you're like, okay, well, what's so great about Stripe Peaks? It's doing some troll, you know. But the Stripe Peaks will take it step by step. Really, the power in Z Game Editor is layering and um, just manipulation. So let's take a look at this and turn it into that desired effect because I want some waves bouncing to the left and right. First thing I'm going to do is uh, let's get rid of this color. Um, I'm going to turn down the saturation of each slice all the way down. So there we go. Next thing we can see here, we can, let's just adjust this size. Um, we just want to get an idea here just to get it as simple as possible. It's not doing anything right now. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off, I believe, it is flat mode. Okay, so we have flat mode on now. And let's go ahead and of course, I can pull up a preset, but I want to do this with you guys so I can show like how we're getting there. Rotation will come to in a while. Uh, I think if I was not mistaken, it had something to do with let's turn down the saturation there. Slices are fine. That's fine. So slice one. Of course, each slice has its own controls uh, in terms of color, but there are also globals like the size and whatnot are global. It doesn't matter what you adjusted on on the slice window. So I believe it is under variable thickness, flat mode, turn that off, line thickness, draw origin. OK, so turn off draw origin. And right now we're going to just play it back. And you can see we have something that's very different from what we started with. We're getting something that, uh, let's play back some audio. So the way I make this kind of like revealed style is uh, what I like to do is uh, I adjust the threshold and the bands and the frequency range. And what this will do is that instead of having like a full band like equalizer bouncing all over when you reduce th uh, the frequency range it's more of just kind of like simple polygons like simple lines just jumping up and down and I'm probably murdering this explanation let's just go ahead and adjust the frequency range and the bands of the threshold to show you what I'm talking about let's mute this and let's play it back so let's go ahead and you can see I'm playing with the frequency range. Let's just reset that to default bands. OK, so now we're getting somewhere. Notice how reducing the bands is giving this more of a triangular effect. It's giving it more of like a simple effect. And then let's adjust threshold threshold. Of course, the louder the volume coming in and I'm using this on the master. You'll get better effects if you put this like through a specific source, like a kick source or like drum source, you'll have a little bit more control. I have less control because I'm running the master file through here. So let's adjust the threshold. 
and you can see as I bring down the threshold, it is activating. Of course, well, one would wonder, well, when do I use a very high threshold? Well, um, sometimes when your threshold is very high, if it's too high, the quiet areas won't trigger it at all. Uh, but let's just go ahead and reduce that threshold, get kind of like this bouncing effect. Let's see if we can do anything with bands. Maybe we can meet it in between. So let's just kind of go like that. That's okay. Of course, you can change the colors of each slice. Um, you know, if you want to get a little bit of color combination in there, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to keep it all white. Uh, lightness is similar to, so I mess around with the lightness and saturation and the uh, scene alpha. If you want to do something, uh, something unique there with the color. Let's go ahead and rotate this. Uh, what I like to do is that I like to type in the value. So we know that 25% is going to be like vertical. So why not just type it in, you know, just to make it easier for ourselves, just so we don't get an inaccurate um, value. So now I'm gonna mess with position Y and let's continue playing back. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna adjust position X. But what we'll do is uh, click and drag to put stripe peaks below the image. And now I'm gonna make kind of some last minute touches. So I'm gonna rotate this and it's straight up, but I'm rotating it to compensate so that it doesn't do this. I don't want that line sticking out. That's kind of like, you know, strange, right? Um, instead, why not just, just make this a little bit bigger. Let's play back again, see what we got. And let's rotate this a little bit more. So it's like 23%, let's bring down and let's move it. Uh, let's reduce the opacity of the image just so we can see. And then we'll bring back the opacity back up. Um, what we'll do here is we'll see what's kind of the cutoff. So right there is not too bad. Uh, what I'll do now too is uh, why not do a little bit of like transparency maybe. Let's just give it a little bit of spice, huh? Let's give it a little bit of a uh, red, red vibes. We'll match the um, tone slightly. Okay, so once we're happy with that, right now, this is very simple, you know, it would need further tweaking. But the idea here is that when you see an effect, don't take it at first glance, there's a lot of powerful um, components inside of all of these effects. And I love this plugin. I love using this. Um, let's go ahead and check line thickness. Now I'm going to keep that really low. I want it to be a little bit more minimal. Maybe I will adjust the threshold a little bit. But I also still just kind of want it popping. Not kind of going too crazy. I'm uh, going to move it a little bit to the left sorry, to the right, because it's kind of popping up here. And that red kind of looks troll. So let's go ahead and just do that. Now what you can do is uh, clone. And let's turn off the image. The cloned one, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it here. What I want to do is I want to flip it. Um, now I don't want to, you could flip it, like rotate it so that the base frequency will be at the top right instead of the bottom left. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. That's easy. So in contrast to the 25% rotation, I'm going to do 75% rotation, and this will bring the base frequency up here. So we have like a parallel. And let's go ahead and bring her in. Now, Let's just kind of do a final overview of this just so that the lines are not popping out too much. You can see there, I'm going to compensate by rotating it inwards, and bring it in. And just like that, we have something that's kind of like it's, it's unique from the original. Of course, I would adjust these position X a little bit more inside so that it comes more inside the image so it doesn't pop out. Same with this. You know, maybe something simpler like that. But um, the whole idea with this is that within moments, you guys can just experiment, test something out, 
and get some pretty cool results just uh, from experimenting. If there's one thing that I learned with this Z game editor is that like patience and experimenting and trying you new things, you know, like taking something and throwing on, I don't know, edge detect, like post-processing, you know, you can do some cool stuff with this plugin. And um, yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys, this kind of like revealed inspired type of uh, feel. Uh, obviously it needs more work, uh, but this is just like a baseline. And um, I do recommend saving your presets. When you do save your presets, you can get some pretty uh, nice results. You can just call them all up. And uh, let me show you guys one of the presets before we wrap up here. So I think this one has uh, those same revealed style um, peak effects. So we'll just say no. And you can see <laughs> it didn't load properly, but I, I was doing the same thing uh, for, let's turn off. I was doing the same thing with the strike peaks. Um, let's go ahead and turn off that image. But yeah, I was doing the same thing with the strike peaks. I don't know why it's showing up like this. Uh, <laughs> but the idea there is that experiment, mess around with the colors, transparency, uh, and especially if there's one thing I would say has a lot of power, don't underestimate, is the bloom. Uh, the bloom can really saturate your image and really diffuse the light. And uh, that's really it, guys. I just wanted to give you guys some inspirations for peak effects. If you guys like this video, remember to hit the like button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.